Hello citizens of internet. I am Professor Ajit Virkod from Mumbai, India. Today I am going to discuss anatomy of the cervix in context of dynamic changes that occur in the femoro-columnar junction throughout the lifespan of a female. First, some basics. Cervix is a cylindrical 3 to 4 cm long and 2.5 to 3 cm broad fibromuscular organ distinct from the uterine body it has its own anatomy physiology function and pathology sadly many obstetricians and gynecologists consider uterus and cervix as one organ the lower part of the cylinder that lies inside the vagina and can be seen in its entirety on per speculum examination is called as the portion vaginalis of the cervix and the portion above which is not seen is called the supravaginal portion of the cervix the channel inside the cylindrical portion of the cervix is called the endocervical canal which has two ends the opening towards the uterine cavity is called the internal cervical os it is the narrowest part of the uterocervical canal the lower opening into the vagina is called the external os the mucosal lining between the internal and external os is called the endocervix whereas the mucosal lining the portion vaginalis of cervix is called the ectocervix the endocervix is lined by columnar epithelial cells the ectocervix is lined by the non skeletonized stratified squamous epithelium which is continuous with and same as the epithelium lining the vagina the junction of the columnar epithelium of the endocervix with the stratified squamous epithelium of the ectocervix is called as the squamo columnar junction which is a dynamic region when light is reflected on the mucosa like what we do during colposcopy the layered squamous epithelium reflects the light and therefore appears pink where the single layered columnar epithelium of ectocervix allows light rays to reach the blood capillaries which are in close proximity to the epithelium which reflect light and is therefore velvety red in color the aim of colposcopy is to look at the shaded area of the cervix under 20x or more magnification in the next few slides i will illustrate the dynamic changes that occur in the squamo columnar junction throughout life from birth to menopause the squamo columnar junction undergoes dynamic changes under the influence of hormones mainly estrogen and local stress factors childhood is the only period when columnar epithelium of the endocervix abruptly changes to stratified squamous epithelium as shown here it is also called congenital squamo columnar junction as it was formed during fetal life thus in childhood the cervix appears pink smooth with a pinpoint os after puberty with the hpga becoming functional under the influence of estrogen secreted by ovary the columnar epithelium of endocervix starts growing outwards as shown here thus a new squamo columnar junction is formed which is peripheral to the original squamo columnar junction on naked eye examination the ectocervix shows velvety areas around the external os that is called ectropion or eversion of cervix the capillaries supplying blood to the mucosa run in juxtaposition to the single layer of cells giving characteristic appearance under magnification of colposcope it looks like a spread of red grapes as shown in the picture here the endocervical single layer lining has one characteristic feature a drawback if i may call it which has important bearing on the formation of transformation zone the columnar cells are shed very easily the slightest trauma or friction can cause sheets of columnar cells to be detached and lost as shown in the picture this physiological change is not without consequences when exposed to the acidic environment of the vaginal secretions the fragile columnar epithelium of the ectropion 
breaks down and is shed and this is the beginning of a new process where the damaged portion is replaced in situ into squamous epithelium by the reserve cells remember the reserve cells under the columnar epithelium are bipotent that is they are capable of transformation into another mature type of epithelium which in this case is the squamous epithelium hence it is called squamous metaplasia in the past it was thought that the adjacent squamous cells grow sideways to cover the denuded area but it is not true an important point to note is that the process is patchy and by no means complete originally it starts at the apex and at the base of cervical crypts and then the two ends meet somewhere in between the entire process of squamous metaplasia occurs in three stages in the first stage shown here which is called reserve cell hyperplasia the totipotential reserve cells start multiplying rapidly by mitosis in the next stage the multiplying reserve cells start to differentiate into squamous cells but the conversion is still incomplete in some areas only the basal and parabasal cells have formed and in other areas the development occurs up to the intermediate cell layer but the superficial cell layer is not formed in this stage hence it is called immature squamous metaplasia stage subsequently even the superficial squamous cells are formed giving rise to the stage called as the mature squamous metaplasia remember all the denuded areas are not in the same stage of metaplasia some areas may be in the first stage others in the second phase and some will be in the in the third stage at the completion of all the three stages a new squamo columnar junction develops towards the internal os as shown in the picture the area between the original and new squamo columnar junction is called as the transformation zone the reason why this area is important from the colposcopy point of view is that this is the area where there is enhanced cellular activity and is therefore prone to develop squamous cell carcinoma but before i go to that this squamous metaplasia causes one more thing after menopause due to lack of estrogen the new squamous columnar junction often recedes into the endocervical canal and is not visible even on colposcopy after eversion of the cervical lips with a special endocervical forceps as shown here but before i talk about that one more thing let me show you this diagram which shows lateral view of cut section of the cervix at the level of the squamous columnar junction in adult life it clearly demarcates the transformation zone so this is how a transformation zone is formed later in adult life in the next few slides i will point out the after effect of the formation of this new intermediate area called transformation zone during squamous metaplasia in some areas the newly formed squamous cells cover the functional columnar cells that produce mucus this causes the underlying cervical crypts of columnar epithelium the so called cervical glands to be blocked they continue to produce mucus but unlike before these secretions accumulate in situ as they have no drainage this accumulation is called a nemothian cyst clinically it looks like a white or yellowish round raised area on the transformation zone as shown in the picture mind you with modern ultrasound technology nemothian cyst can be observed on transvaginal sonography of cervix it is seen as a round anechoic area surrounding the endocervical canal marked by a green circle in this sonogram having explained the two entities let me put a question to you are the squamous columnar junction and transformation zone synonymous entities if you have understood my talk then you would give the correct answer which is no the terms transformation zone and squamo columnar junction are frequently used interchangeably in the literature however these are two distinct entities the squamo columnar junction 
is the area in which the squamous epithelium of the ectocervix meets the columnar epithelium of the endocervix. The cervical transformation zone is a dynamic entity of metaplasia throughout a patient's life and is histologically the area where the glandular epithelium has been replaced by squamous epithelium by a process of metaplasia. Thus, the squamocolonal junction is part of the transformation zone, but the transformation zone comprises a larger area than just the squamocolonal junction. In the end, let me address the question, why study the transformation zone in the first place? Recent studies indicate squamocolonal junction to be a site of embryonic cell population with a top-down pattern of differentiation. The reserve cells are the progeny of embryonic cells with different susceptibilities to infection by HPV and therefore involved in malignant transformation. The transformation zone of the cervix is the site of origin of greater than 90% of precancerous lesions also called cervical intraepithelial lesions CIN and cancers. If you want to know more about this topic or any other topic in obstetrics and gynecology, please refer to my books Modern Gynecology, Modern Obstetrics and Practical Obstetrics and Gynecology and other books. For purchase inquiries, contact me on this WhatsApp number. I have also published two question answer books which are particularly useful for exam going students. These are Clinical Cases in Obstetrics, 1000 plus questions and answers and Clinical Cases in Gynecology, 1000 plus questions and answers. You can also follow me on other social media platforms like Facebook or Meta, Blogspot and Instagram. The links are given here. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, share it with your friends and also subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching.